<laughs> in today's video, we're taking a look at sulfuric acid to see what it does when it reacts with sugar and to see how long it takes meat to dissolve. Guys, it's the 4th of July, and you know what that means. <laughs> Callie's got fire, and we've got new t-shirts. Bam! Do I look absolutely insane? Because I should. Good. Guys, this container is almost entirely sulfuric acid. In the past, Grant has done some experiments where he mixed this with sugar, and it reacts rather violently, turning into this black foam that expands a lot. We wanted to try doing some more of those with a few different varieties and twists on it. We're gonna try a couple different types of sugar. We're gonna try it in and out of sealed containers. And I thought while we've got some sulfuric acid, we should also see what it does to a couple types of meat. So I've got a hot dog and a little bit of pork belly, and we're gonna see what it does to those if we just let it sit in it for a while. Here's the basic idea. We're going to try mixing several varieties of sugar with sulfuric acid to see how it reacts with each one. We'll see what these reactions do inside open and sealed containers. Now this sulfuric acid is dangerous stuff. So of course I'm wearing gloves uh, I'm in a very open, well-ventilated area, and I've got eye protection. I'm gonna be keeping those on at all times. I also have a large bucket of water that's been mixed with baking soda nearby. So if I get anything splashed on me, I can just rinse that off with the baking soda water. It should neutralize the acid as well as wash it off. We've got ourselves a hot dog, and that's made of some kind of meat. It's a little bit of a mystery what kinds, perhaps. But first off, we're just gonna see what this does in the acid. I'm just gonna dip it in for like, five seconds, pull it out, see if anything's changed, and then if that hasn't completely eaten through it, we're just gonna let it sit in there for a while. It doesn't look like it's done too much. Let's just let it, I think it, it does seem like it smokes when I first put it in. Now for this other jar, we're just gonna take a little bit of this pork belly, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut a piece off, and that's gonna rest right in our acid. We're gonna let both of those just sit in our acid for a little while and see what it does to them. But now we can move on to the next things. Normal granulated sugar, powdered sugar. We're gonna see if these react any differently to the sulfuric acid. Oh. Well, that answers that question. I hadn't even gotten around to stirring the powdered sugar and it just started reacting instantly. Well, not instantly, but very, very quickly. Powdered sugar is far finer grains and so has a lot more surface area in contact with the acid and that makes a big difference. It starts reacting way quicker. We're now starting to see that reaction in the granulated sugar. It just didn't happen as fast. Well, this is more dense. Powdered sugar stuff is a lot lighter and more of a foam. I guess they're both kind of like a foam, but just different densities of foam, noticeably. That was pretty entertaining. I've seen the sulfuric acid mixed with granulated sugar before, and it does, as you saw, react and start building up and then bubble up out. However, with the powdered sugar, it goes way faster, and I think that's pretty cool. I want to try a couple other types of sugar in the form of candy. So I've got some Skittles and some Sour Bright Crawlers. I'm gonna put each of those in a test tube and then just add a little bit of acid on top of that and see how it reacts. While I've got the sour gummy worms and the Skittles in their tubes with some acid, I'm also gonna take one of these tubes and fill it with some of the powdered sugar and pour some acid into that. That reacted pretty quickly last time I want to see if it does anything in a more constrained container like the shape of these test tubes. See the acid permeating its way all the way down through the sugar at this point. It did not take too much longer than that before it started reacting in the bowl. Well, there it goes. Yes, at least a tiny bit. Carrying some unreacted sugar with it. 
So that was interesting, but it wasn't exactly violent, which is not necessarily a bad thing because we're still learning what it's doing. However, I think we might be able to exaggerate the effect even more. We've got this shape of flask, and I think if we fill this pretty full, then the amount of reacting substances we have in here will greatly surpass the amount of volume we have in the container. And I'm hoping that as a constriction goes up the neck, we can actually get it to spray out a little bit more than we did with our single test tube. I'm just gonna pour give it a stir for as long as I feel like I can, but as soon as I see it starting to react, I'm back and way up. That's it, I'm moving. <laughs> that goes quick. Let's just check in real quick on our uh gummy worm and skittles, which so far, I gotta say, I haven't seen anything happening. Which really makes me think that surface area is key. We had a slight casualty, our gummy worms beaker tipped over. You know, it really wasn't going anywhere that I could see. Like, it seemed like there was almost no reaction. So, uh, I think we're just gonna call that. We're gonna let the Skittles keep running, see if anything changes there. For the moment, I'm just gonna neutralize this. We've got another tapered flask, similar to the other one, but this time I am going to use the granulated sugar. And this will go slower, but that's actually something I want. It should give me time to stir and mix everything together better than I was able to with the powdered sugar. Demon elephant toothpaste. That was pretty fun, and we wanted to scale it up, and we went way up, so we've got a one gallon glass jar here. We've got about half a bottle left in each of our bottles. So I'm gonna pour, I think, just all of this in. I might swirl it around a bit, depends on how much time it looks like I have. Then I'm just gonna back up and see what kind of fountaining demon elephant toothpaste we've got. It's forming out of the top of the bottle. That's fantastic. Oh, that's amazing. The glass bottle ends here, and then everything above right here is just built up on top of it like lava. That was more energetic than I expected, and I am really happy about it. With our other one gallon jar, I've filled it about half full of sugar. I've got 50-60% mm, of one of these bottles of sulfuric acid. I'm gonna pour this in, start swirling it around, and we know that the granulated sugar doesn't react as quickly as the powdered sugar, so I'm hoping I'll have time to just swirl it around, but then I'm actually gonna throw the lid on and back way away. I wanna see if this stuff builds up enough pressure and heat that it could actually break through this bottle. Now we back away. Oh! <laughs> it didn't break the jar, but that lid was on about as tight as I could get it, and that didn't stop it for more than about 10 seconds. Hissing immediately started, just pressure all over, and then pop! And I think it just tore that cap right off. That went flying. So that's a no on breaking the jar in this setup, but it did tear the cap right off of our bottle, and that was pretty cool. Let's take a look at the hot dog and the pork belly that we put in the acid. Now, we did have some chunks go flying from our, uh, our erupting bottles, but 
That's not what I'm trying to look at. I'm trying to look at the hot dog itself. Ooh, that seems to have taken on a weird sort of gelatin consistency. I think the outside skin has, in fact, begun to dissolve. Let's try and rinse this off in our baking soda water and see what it looks like. Yeah, you can see that acid definitely just ate through the outside layer of the hot dog skin. That is gross, and it looks burned where it was only like partially touching it. There is something sort of gelatiny that I'm able to like rub off onto the walls of the glass here. That concerns me, but look at that. Look, what's shaking? That is dissolved fat. I swear there was like skin on this when I put it in and now I don't see any of that. I think the skin got eaten away more than anything else. All right, I am going to do something that is unsafe and not recommended but I'm going to take my finger and just very quickly dip it in the sulfuric acid and then rinse it off in my baking soda water. This is not something you should do at home or anywhere else. I'm just trying to see, getting first-hand experience, what this is gonna do to me. Uh, I didn't feel anything. Uh, I think it was a tiny, tiny bit warm, but I think that's just because it's warm in its container. Um, started rinsing instantly, still kind of reacting a little bit with the spots like in the bed of my fingernail. But if anything does happen, I'll be sure to report it. Like in the next day or so, if I just like have red on my finger from where I dipped it in the acid, I'll make sure and let you guys know. All right, now that that's neutralized. I'm just kidding, different gummy worm. I'm not gonna eat these. Guys, that's it for today, but we've got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.